Hello and welcome to session two of Year 5 History with me, Mrs. Furby. It's lovely to have you back. Um, it's lovely to have you if you've not been to one of these sessions before, but it is great to have you here now. We are learning all about the Anglo-Saxons and, and the Vikings and Alfred the Great in this unit, and this session is going to be all about the Saxons and how they lived in quite a lot of detail. So your learning objective for today is I'm learning how to identify characteristic features of time periods and civilizations. Ooh, don't worry if that sounds a bit wordy or a bit complicated, it will all be explained very, very soon. For today's session, you just need a pen or a pencil and a piece of paper. That's all you need. So let's get going. Who were the Anglo-Saxons? The Anglo-Saxons came from three areas in Northwest Europe and they were from three different tribes. You can see on the map at the bottom in the corner that um, they came from... Um, we had the Angles, the Jutes and the Saxons, and they all came to different parts. It always, it always fascinates me that the Jutes, which were the furthest north, came the longest way round. Um, and actually, if you look at that map, they kind of came up through the Southampton Portsmouth um, pool area. So there you go. Um, it's believed the main reason they came to Britain was for the great farming land, where they were from in what we now know as Denmark, Germany and the Netherlands. Um, it was often flooded, so they couldn't grow very good crops. They were farmers and craftsmen, but they could be very fierce warriors when they needed to be. They ruled England for around 500, 500 years, and unlike the Romans, they didn't officially leave, which means that there are many people who live in Britain today who, if you could trace them back that far, would have Anglo-Saxon ancestors. So part of their families 14, 1500 years ago would have been the Saxons. Okay, And there are still lots of Saxon surnames uh, in use in Britain today. Houses and settlements. We looked a little bit of this like this last lesson, but we're looking a bit more detail. The Saxons lived in small villages and towns, usually near a running water source, like a river or a stream or something like that. They built their house. Oh, you see, they built their houses from wood and thatch roofs, which is why the original houses aren't around today. Unlike the Romans, who used a lot of concrete and bricks, the Saxons used wood and wood rots. So the original houses don't exist today. We've got recreations, which is what you can see in this picture, but the actual ones don't, they're not there. They had one room with a fire in the middle, and this is where all the cooking would happen. The whole family would live in that room. So it doesn't matter how big the family was, they'd all live in there. And each settlement had a long house, which you can see in the picture below, which belonged to the chieftain of that settlement. They didn't have separate toilets or kitchens, and they would wash in the local running water. The Anglo-Saxon people. So the Anglo-Saxon people were split into sort of different levels. We've got, a diff we've got what we call a hierarchical system. Okay, so you had the thanes, and that was the most important man in the village, or the chieftain, if the house he was known. He lived in the great hall, or the long house, with his family. And he made sure everyone obeyed the laws of the king and led his people into battle with enemy tribes if he needed to. You also had the slaves. Now these people did not have any rights, they belonged to other people, and they were often people who'd been captured during battles. So they could have been a neighboring tribe, or they could have been um, some uh, somebody else who was invading, but they were captured and they were used as a slave. They couldn't own a house, they didn't have any rights, and they usually slept on the floor of the Great Hall and did the toughest jobs. They were not free to live their lives at all. You had the churls, who were farmers who owned their own land. Okay, so that's quite important that they owned their own land. It means they were in control of what their land did. There were no shops, so they had to grow and trade all of their food. The farmers tended to grow lots of crops and keep chickens, cows, pigs, sheep, goats and horses. There were no doctors or hospitals, and most people didn't live past the age of 50. So life expectancy was a lot lower than it is today. What about children? That's always a question that you ask in history. Is what, what was life like for children? Let me move my screen out of the way of the picture. Children were valued. And unusually for that time period, boys and girls were treated equally in most ways. So there were lots of countries at that time who were very disappointed if you had a girl because a girl couldn't inherit the family land or the family business or the family title. But the Saxons, they didn't mind having girls. All children were expected to work and help out from a young age. Girls were expected to work in the house, supporting their mothers with cooking, sewing and day to day jobs like collecting eggs and firewood. And the boys learned to hunt, fight, and how to farm. Education, which was mainly reading and writing, was not considered important, and most people did not learn. In fact, mostly at the beginning of the Saxon period, the only people who did learn to read and write were the religious monks, so men who were part of the church, and they were the ones that did all the writing and recording. Um, 
and they were almost exclusively men. Women didn't learn to read and write. By the end of the Saxon period, Alfred the Great and other leaders like him thought that education was really important and so more and more men were learning to read and write, but still most didn't. Families tended to have lots and lots of children and they all lived in one room houses. Children did play outside a lot, but they had to make up their own games from whatever they found. So, I want you to stop and have a think, and you can go back to the page before if you need to. And I want you to write a list of what life was like for Anglo-Saxon children and what life's like for you today. And see what you think the big differences are and what the big similarities are. Okay, when you've done, unpause the screen. I'm going to talk about religion and what the Anglo-Saxons believed in. Okay, so you've done, your, you've done your chart about what the differences are for children. When the Anglo-Saxons came to Britain, they were pagans, which meant they believed in lots of different gods. These gods actually give us the days of our names of the week. For example, Thor's day, who was the god of thunder, became Thursday. In the 6th century, the Christian leaders of Ireland and Italy started sending monks to Britain to convert, to change people's mind and make them become Christians. Their job was to convert the king. If they could convert the king, then everybody else would follow. And you can see in the picture below, there's a king who, and a priest who's trying to convert him, trying to change his mind of what he believes in. In 597, the Pope in Rome, so all the way across in Italy, sent a monk called Augustine to meet with the powerful Saxon king, Ethelbert of Kent. To begin with, Ethelbert thought Augustine was using magic on him and was not happy. But eventually, he converted, he changed his mind and became a Christian. And the first monastery, the first religious building, Christian religious building, was built in Canterbury. This is still where the most important church in England is um, thing, and that's where we have the Archbishop of Canterbury, and Canterbury Church is very important. Monasteries and churches were built all over Britain, okay, and to begin with, they were built from the wooden structures um, that the houses were built from, but over time, because they realised how important churches were, they began to be built more from stone, and there are still churches around today that were from the sort of 10 hundreds, so from, from sort of year thousand onwards, and um, you can still see those. And our, in 664, after years and years of arguments and fighting, the Anglo-Saxons converted to Christianity and they followed the Pope in Rome. Okay, So during this time period, the Saxons changed their minds and stopped believing in their pagan gods and began to believe in the Christian God. And from this point on, Britain stayed a Christian, um, a mainly Christian country, um, obviously today we're a fabulous country with all sorts of religions and we celebrate what everybody believes but um, at this point it was Christianity is what the main belief was in Britain. After this most Saxon towns built their own churches so from this point on once they were all Christians they always put a church in their towns. Art and culture. We are very lucky that although lots of Saxon houses haven't survived lots of Saxon jewellery and metalwork has and we can see that today. This is because the Saxons often buried their dead, the very rich ones, in ships, okay? But they didn't put them to sea, they buried the ship. Um, with, and they surrounded the dead person with very expensive things. The most famous is Sutton Hoo, and if you saw um, episode uh, session one, then we saw the Sutton Hoo helmet. Um, and we're going to learn a bit more about that in another session. Um, but the Saxons were famous for making jewellery, pottery, weapons, textiles, which was clothes. Not, obviously none of those really have survived today, not many, because um, cloth um, doesn't survive for very long. Stained glass, which was a new type of thing to do. Picture, uh, stained glass pictures, so images for churches. And they made, used bones, animal bones, to make things like combs and buckles for clothes because it was really strong. The Saxons also love music and storytelling, and the Beowulf poem is still very famous today. Worth looking up if you want to. Right, so your task for today, and you're going to pause the screen once I've explained it to you, and then unpause it when you're done. Uh, using all the things we've learned, and you can always go back through the video if you can't remember, I want you to draw your own Christian Saxon village, and you can use the image on the screen to help you. You need to include as many different parts of Saxon life as we've discussed today. You can draw people and animals in the town as well. And once you've drawn your tax Saxon town, you need to label all the different parts. And you could even make up a name and a backstory for one of the people you've drawn. Like maybe you use the Thane or the chieftain or a priest or a child and uh, what their life was like. So use the images to help you. Use the video if you need to go back through and unpause the screen when you're done. 
fabulous. I wish I could see all your pictures right now because I bet they look amazing. So keep them there and take them back into school to show your teachers when you can. Um, so today we have learnt a lot about Saxon life and the characteristics, the things that made the Saxons the Saxons and how they lived. You've used this information to compare the lives of children today to the lives of children during the Anglo-Saxon times. And then you've pulled all the information together that you've learned to create your own Anglo-Saxon town. Fabulous work. Lovely work with you. See you next time. Have a lovely day.